The kayak crew have been kayaking since 2016 and over the last seven years or so we've learned a great deal about kayaking, sometimes the hard way. We've kayaked on the coast, on estuaries and rivers, canals and lakes, pretty much anywhere we can really. We've condensed down into the following what we feel are our top 10 tips that we've picked up during our many years kayaking. Most of the following tips apply generally to all types of routes but a few apply specifically to say sea kayaking or river kayaking. Tip number one, plan your route. There are numerous aspects to planning the route for a kayak and we'd summarise them as follows. Firstly, your route map. Unless you were just going for a potter around off a beach or some other form of leisurely paddling, having a map of your intended route is crucially important. A route map helps you to establish how long the route is and roughly how long it's going to take you to do it, where you are going to launch and land from, what sort of water you'll be covering, etc. We use OS Maps to plot all of our routes before we go. OS Maps is of course specific to the UK, but if you live in another country, then we're sure that you have a similar service that you can use to plot your proposed routes to see what distance they are, etc. Secondly, launch and landing locations. A crucial aspect of any route you plan is of course where you are going to launch from and land. On a round trip circular kayak, you will launch and land at the same location, which makes it a bit easier. We though mostly do one-way linear kayak since we prefer not having to double back and cover the same ground on the return trip. You will usually be using at least one vehicle for your kayak so parking near to your launch and landing locations also needs to be factored in. Thirdly, logistics. The downside to linear one-way trips is that you need to know how you are going to get between the land and launch locations. We generally use inflatable kayaks so we can take them on buses, trains or in taxis because when deflated they pack into large backpacks. The alternative is of course to leave a vehicle at either end of the route which is what we often do even if we are using our inflatable kayaks. Tip number two, equipment. This is a summary of what equipment we feel is the most important when kayaking and this is by no means an exhaustive list. Firstly paddles. Paddles can cost anywhere from £30 to over £500. Next to the kayak itself, your paddle has the biggest impact on your performance in the water, so we think it's worth investing in a good paddle. The main benefits of expensive paddles is that they are much stiffer and help to propel you through the water much more efficiently. Secondly, personal flotation devices, or PFDs. PFDs are a safety item which will assist you in staying afloat if you end up in the water. We suggest getting one with good zip pockets since these are really handy for storing phones, keys and other items. We particularly like the high-backed PFDs since the back padding sits higher than the back of your kayak seat so that it does not get obstructed by the seat back. Thirdly, kayak seats. Most kayaks usually come with seats included. These are usually fabric seats which use strap to D-rings on the kayak using four straps. We usually add some form of seat padding to our kayak seats. Some inflatable kayak seats have inflatable bases such as on the Ituit X100. Fourthly, pumps. If you're using inflatable kayaks then you obviously need a pump. We have used a number of pumps but would recommend a pump that can inflate both single action or double action. We'd also recommend getting a pump which can both inflate your kayak and deflate it when you're done at the end. You can get electric pumps which speed up the inflation process but you still need to use a hand pump to finish inflating your kayak to the desired pressure. Tip number three, the weather. Checking the weather forecast is crucial when planning any kayak, especially if you're going to be on open water such as on the sea. On open stretches of water, like the sea, wide estuaries or large lakes, you generally want to be paddling with the wind behind you since paddling against a strong wind can be a case of two steps forward, one step back. Inflatable kayaks are more susceptible to the wind than hard shell kayaks because they sit on the water rather than in it. Strong winds are the nemesis of kayakers and we generally do not go out if the forecast is that the wind is going to be in excess of about 20 miles per hour or so at the most. Tip number four, clothing. Suffice to say that you should dress for the conditions and clothing can range from a full dry suit in the winter to just a bathroom beach shoes when it's very hot in the summer or anywhere in between. 
Clothing is more of an issue if you are paddling in cold conditions or where the water temperature is cold, such as in the early spring, late autumn or winter. When it's cold, items such as dry suits, semi-dry suits, dry jackets and dry trousers need to be considered. When it's warmer, it's simply a case of wearing what suits you. We would suggest avoiding anything made from cotton since when it's wet, cotton tends to stay wet and sticks to your skin. Our advice is to take several layers with you that you can put on and off as suits you. We rarely get cold when we're actually paddling since the effort of paddling actually helps to keep us warm. However, if we stop off for a lunch break or when we stop at the end of the kayak, we often find that we almost immediately can start to feel a lot colder. So we normally take jackets and a few other things to wear and keep them in our dry bags. Good kayaking gloves are well worth investing in since you can otherwise get blisters on your fingers. In the winter we normally wear thick neoprene boots on our feet and in the summer we usually wear water shoes which have small holes in the bottom for water to drain out. Tip number five, sea conditions. If you are sea kayaking then it's essential to check the sea conditions before you go. We use surfforecast.com to get sea swell forecasts but there are other websites such as bigsalty.com Note that sea conditions can change fairly quickly so it's definitely worth rechecking the conditions the night before you go and even on the morning of the paddle before you set off. As a general rule we do not go out on the sea if the predicted swell is more than about 0.8 metres at most or if the wind is going to be more than about 20 miles per hour. We even use webcams to get a real time view of what the sea is like for somewhere on our planned route or nearby to where the route is. Tip number six, tides and tide races. When kayaking on the sea on estuaries or tidal sections of river, the tide times can be crucial. There are some sections of the coast where you have to go with the tide since they are so tidal that you would struggle to go against it, although it's not as much of an issue on other sections. Remember the tides generally run in cycles of about six hours, so there are two high tides and two low tides every 24 hours or so. Also, if it's a very tidal section of the coast, then you may have to carry or wheel your kayak hundreds of metres from the water to the top of the beach when the tide is out or very low. Tide races are usually shallower sections of the sea or where the water funnels through a channel between the mainland and an island. Such tide races result in fast flowing and often turbulent stretches of water, so they are best paddle about an hour or so either side of high tide when the water is fairly flat. On estuaries, tide is crucial since almost all estuaries have a strong tidal current and you pretty much have to either go up them with the incoming tide or go down them with the outgoing tide. Another issue with estuaries is that they can empty out to a large degree for up to two hours, either side of low tide, exposing many sandbanks and mud flats, and it can become very difficult then to launch or land. Tip number seven, stay close to the shore. On sea kayaks we would suggest staying within 200 to 300 metres of the shore in most cases since the further out you go the more chance there is of things going wrong. You need to be particularly careful where there is an offshore wind since this can blow you out to sea. We have on a few occasions been caught out by the tide and wind and found ourselves paddling for our lives to get back to the shore. If it's a very calm day on the sea with very light winds then we will sometimes venture out further but in general terms, the closer to the shore, the safer you are. Tip number eight, river levels. If river kayaking, then we would suggest that you always check the water level of the river before you plan a kayak on it. We use the website River Levels UK, which has live readings for gauging stations along most rivers. It's important to check that the water level is not so high as to make the river potentially dangerous to paddle, on the day when you intend to go due to the volume and speed of the flow. This can often happen after heavy rain. At the other end of the spectrum we have also paddled on the Y when the water level was very low, almost in the brown segment below the usual range and we found ourselves hitting lots of rocks under the water and bottoming out a lot because the river was so shallow. Tip number nine, where can you kayak? While you can kayak almost anywhere on the sea, there are some locations which are military firing ranges where paddling is prohibited during their operational hours. We found this out the hard way when we once unwittingly entered the Castle Martin firing range in Pembrokeshire 
and were politely asked to leave by one of their firing range safety boats. The other thing to bear in mind is that paddling in many industrial ports and harbours is forbidden. Regarding estuaries and tidal rivers, in the UK you have a right to paddle up to the extent of the tidal range, where a river's tidal limit has been altered by the building of weirs, sluices or other structures, then it's the historic or unrestricted tidal limit, which is the relevant one. Regarding non-tidal sections of rivers and regarding canals, if the river or canal is one of the ones covered by the waterways licence, then you are allowed to paddle it as long as you have the licence. If the river or canal in question is not one of the ones covered by the waterways licence, then the position in the UK is slightly unclear. British Canoeing's website states that they believe that there is a strong case to demonstrate an existing public right of navigation on all navigable rivers. However, many landowners believe that rivers are private and require permission from the landowner before paddling. With lakes, the position varies, with some of them being free to paddle on, some requiring payment of a fee and others not allowing paddling at all, so check before you go. Reservoirs also have different rules depending on which utility company manages them. Last but not least, tip number 10, keep your gear safe. We would stress the importance of keeping anything you want to keep dry, such as electrical items or clothes, within dry bags. It's also important to bungee or tether any bags down to secure them and make sure that they don't end up going overboard. We always secure our paddles to the kayak with paddle leashes, since losing your paddle can leave you floating adrift. Finally, presuming you take your phone with you kayak in, then if you want to have it handy to take photos etc, then you need to use a lanyard phone case to make sure that you don't lose the phone overboard. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed then consider subscribing by clicking on the left below. Happy paddling from the kayak crew.